Hey there, it's Bree, and these are my top favorite series and duologies that I read in 2020. So continuing on with my favorites of 2020, today I have my top favorite series and duologies that I read in 2020. So I apologize in advance because I'm filming during the day and my children are being very loud. It's okay, it's fine, we're gonna do this anyway. They're mostly adult, but I do have some YA series in here that I read and loved in 2020. I chose these because I either read most of the series, like if there were a lot of books, I read most of the series, or I read the entire series, or both books in the duology in 2020. The first one on this list, nobody's gonna be surprised because I've been talking about it like crazy lately, is the Bergman Brothers series. Always Only You is the second book in the series. This is my favorite one. This was a gift from Zay from Witty Reads because she knew that I am obsessed with this. This whole series follows the Bergman brothers and there is a sister too, but the Bergman family is like this big, loud, loving family who have two amazing parents and all of the books in this have some sort of disability inclusion in them and that is kind of Chloe Lise's thing. She is autistic herself, but she likes to write inclusive romances to just prove that anyone can have a happily ever after. They're great for people who love contemporary romances and new adult romances and sports romances because the first two books do have sports in them. The first one, the heroine is a soccer player. The second one, the hero is a hockey player. I feel like there's something for everybody in this series. So in the first book, it's like a hate to love new adult romance. And then the second one is kind of like a friends to lovers forced togetherness. And then the third one is a marriage in crisis. So if you are a contemporary romance lover and you love, I'm trying to think of authors, like if you love of Penny Reed and Mariana Zapata, although her books aren't quite as slow burn as Mariana Zapata. If you like that type of sense of humor and things like that too, and if you love like big loud families who just love each other, then you will love the Bergman Brothers series. I highly recommend it. The next series is a series that I freaking binged. <laughs> I was in the middle of a readathon and I only had the first book in the series on my TBR for the readathon, but I scrapped my entire TBR so I could binge the series. And that is is the Filthy Rich American series by Nikki Sloan. The first book, which is The Initiation, was the second book I ever read by Nikki Sloan. The first one was The Doctor, which is awesome. This is a series that on paper doesn't sound like anything I would like because it's very, like you have overprivileged, entitled, bratty, rich people that the story's about. And normally I like hate that. And then you also have like a whole lot of like reality TV show kind of drama, but then there's a lot of super, super taboo stuff in it. There are things that happen in the series and this book that I kept questioning my own morality and my own, like I kept questioning myself, like why am I okay with this? Why do I like this? in the best way possible, like the best way possible. It was so, so freaking epic. The books are pretty short. It's probably the number one most bingeable series I've ever read so far. And that's saying something I've read a lot of series and I am absolutely obsessed with it. I don't remember how many books are in this series. I think there's like four or five, but there is still one more book that needs to come out in the series that hasn't come out yet that I will immediately read when it comes out. But if you haven't read the series yet and you're okay with some taboo and dark subjects, then I highly recommend this one. Next is a duology that for that same readathon I binged. And it was another one where the first book in the duology was on my TBR, but then I immediately picked up the second book because I couldn't not. It is the, what is this called? The Beautiful Hearts duology, right? Yes, Beautiful Hearts duet. And this is book one, Bring Down the Stars. You absolutely need to read this duet in order. And this does not end with a happily ever after or happy for now because it is part of duet. So keep that in mind. This is also super, super emotional. It's by Emma Scott. Emma Scott also wrote, I think the previous year, she wrote one of my favorite duets, which is the Full Tilt duet. And this is probably a close second. Like I feel like Full Tilt will always be my all-time favorite by this author, but this comes in second place. This one has one of the best love triangles I've ever read. If you don't like love triangles, give this one a try because I feel like you might like this one even if you don't like love triangles. It's really freaking good. It has like a lot of amazing pining and it's just, it's really good. It's really good. Highly, highly recommend, especially if you like Emma Scott, but you haven't read this series yet, you definitely need to. And then this next one, I do own the physical copies of the first and second book, but I lent them to my niece. So I don't have it to hold up with me, but I will put the picture up here. It is the Daughter of the Pirate King duology by Trisha Levenseller. Trisha Levenseller is another author who I discovered in 2020 that made it to my favorites list. 
and this duology is part of the reason why. This one is like an enemies to lovers. The heroine is a pirate. She's obviously the daughter of the pirate king and the hero is coming after her and kidnaps her. But what he doesn't realize is that she wanted to be kidnapped and she has her own plans. So I almost feel like if you are a fan of Throne of Glass and you liked Selena in that one, you will like the heroine in this book. What's also great is these two books are fairly short and I feel like they were the perfect length because I felt like there was no fluff in it. It was just everything you needed in those books and it was the perfect, perfect length. I just blew through them and this one too, like I wasn't expecting to want to read the second book right away. A lot of times, like I'm not a series I used to be that way, but because I have so many books on my TBR that I want to read, it's rare that I binge a series, so it says something when I actually binge one. And this one I absolutely binged and I love. And if you read um, The Shadows Between Us, which I feel like is a little more popular than this one, then you will like this book. And then I had to include my favorite series by Kennedy Ryan, which is the Grip series. This is the prequel, the first book, Flow. You absolutely need to read this one first. I highly recommend it. I did not do that because I didn't realize it. Because because I feel like sometimes prequels are written after a series has already come out, so I didn't realize that I needed to read this one first. I ended up reading Grip first. It's labeled book number one, and then Still is labeled book number two, and then this is a prequel, but I do highly recommend reading this book first. What I did was, when I did finally pick this up, because I read Grip, and then a lot of time went by, and then I read this, I immediately picked up Grip again. And then a little bit of time went by, and I read Still recently. I actually read Still, I think this year, Oh my god, I have hair in my face. Why? But the series is so good. It's so, not only is it my favorite Kennedy Ryan series, but obviously it's on this list. It's one of my favorite series of all time, like not even just for 2020, like for all time. This book made me fall in love with a couple, and then I just felt like I fell deeper and deeper in love with them with every single book. And this couple goes through so much together. They like rally against all odds because it feels like everything is against them. They overcome so much. So they, it's an interracial romance too, which plays a really big part. The hero in this is an activist and he's a rapper and the heroine is like his manager and it's just, it's so freaking good. There's so many beautiful lines in this and it kills me because I didn't scoop up the grip box that she had and now I'm like hating my life. And I also am determined to get the original covers as well as the new covers. She has new covers for this. This is the only physical book that I have from the Grip Trilogy. I own them all in audio though. And I want both versions because they're so freaking good. Another series that I read in 2020 that I actually still haven't finished yet, but I, I read the first like three books in it is the Edge series by C.D. Reese. This is the prequel absolutely have to read this first. Same thing, just like with the Grip series, you need to read this book first because this establishes the relationship between the couple. This is a super intense, super dark romance, like super dark contemporary romance. It's also military romance. You're dealing with a lot of trauma. There's a lot of stuff in here that is absolutely not for everybody. And the series though is just so unique. It sucks you in. Like it's it's intense. I think that's why it's taken me so long to finish the rest of the series. I think I only have one or two books to read left in the series. Not because I didn't like it, but because it was so intense and I binge the first few of these books and I just needed a little bit of a break, but I definitely want to pick it back up again. I am obsessed with this series. This first book is really important because it establishes their relationship and makes you invested in their relationship because what this couple goes through throughout the rest of the series is intense. Like I almost feel like this is also a bit of a suspense romance and I don't normally like that, but I loved it in the series. Another series that I loved in 2020 was the Victorian Rebel series. This is the second book, The Hunter. The first book is The Highwayman. Kerrigan Byrne is an author that I am definitely going to binge. This is a series that is absolutely bingeable. It's a dark historical romance series and they have some of the best heroes, like the best dark tortured heroes are in this series. If you like dark and tortured heroes, you will love this series. It is full of them. So many freaking great things in them. So many great tropes and such epic romances. The next is a trilogy that I read that I'm obsessed with. I binged this trilogy back to back to back. It is the Reed Rivers trilogy by Lauren Rowe. We all know Lauren Rowe is one of my all-time favorite contemporary romance authors, and she came out with the Reed Rivers trilogy this year, and I loved every second of it. I had been waiting for Reed's books 
for so long and I'm so glad that we were able to get a whole trilogy and it wasn't just one book of him. It was absolutely necessary. I loved it so much. So I do recommend reading the Morgan Brothers series first. If you haven't read the Morgan Brothers series, you need to read that first before the series. It says that you don't have to, but I recommend you do because Reed does show up in the Morgan Brothers series. You feel like you appreciate him more and you appreciate his book more if you read that series because he intimidates the hell out of the Morgan Brothers and he's like this kind of mysterious character in the background the entire time. So the buildup to the Reed Rivers trilogy is so worth it once you finally get there. So Reed is a big a-hole he's a huge huge ass he's not a very nice guy but he's also one of those guys who doesn't realize that a lot of the stuff that he does is for the greater good and that he is a little prickly on the outside and his delivery isn't always the best but his intentions are good so it's one of those like i hate everyone but you type of characters too that i love and there is some epic groveling in the series highly recommend it Read the Morgan Brothers series first, you won't be disappointed, and then read this one. And then another favorite series, my best friend is actually reading this series now and she's loving it, she's been texting me about it, is the Bromance Book Club series by Alyssa K. Adams. This is the second book, Undercover Bromance. It's my favorite book in the series. This is another contemporary romance series that has a lot of different tropes for each book, so there's like something for everybody. And the first book is A Marriage in Crisis, and then the second book, this one is Enemies to Lovers, and then the third book is Friends to Lovers. The whole kind of premise behind this series is it all revolves around a bromance book club. The hero in this book actually is the one who put together this bromance book club, and it's a romance novel reading book club for men. It consists of a bunch of like high-powered, high-influencing men, but they all read these romance novels so that they can learn from them. They get a lot of relationship advice in them, especially the first book because it's a marriage in crisis, and they kind of recruit members who need them. So in the first book, the hero is recruited into it because him and his wife are having problems. And then Mac is like, here, read this book, learn something. And it's so freaking great. I love it. It's hilarious. These are all rom-coms. Oh, I can't remember if the first book has it, but the other two books definitely have hilarious animals in them too. Like the last book is a cat. This book is a rooster. I can't remember if there's one in the first book, but oh my gosh, it's so freaking good. I laughed out loud so many times and underlined so many things in these books that I just found hilarious. They are also all very feminist, which I love. I just love everything about this series. And last but not least, I feel a little weird including this on a list of series because to me, this doesn't feel like a series, but technically it is. It is the Elements series by Brittany C. Cherry. These can all be read as standalones. Like technically this is book four, but I read this book first because I didn't realize it was part of a series. I don't know what the connection is <laughs> between these books. Like I read, I think everything in this series, I'm pretty sure. I loved all of them, gave them all five stars except for one, I think. I don't think there's any characters that show up in this series in the other books, and I don't think it even takes place in the same town. The only like thing that is kind of the same is that they're all super emotional, like Brittany St. Cherry is so good at writing super emotional books, and the series is full of super, super emotional books, and they're all like very quick reads, like it's super, super short. This is actually one of her new covers. I bought this entire series because she redesigned the covers, and I like, and she was selling them them and I immediately signed up to get one because I'm obsessed. I do also want to get the original covers as well because I like both of them. But anyway, Brittany C. Cherry also is another one. I feel like almost all of these, like a lot of the authors on this list also were on my list of favorite authors. If you haven't read the Element series yet, I highly recommend it. This was my favorite book. It's a enemies to lovers romance, grumpy sunshine, really emotional, very, very good book. Definitely read it if you haven't gotten to it yet. All right, guys, that's it. Those are all the series and duologies that I loved in 2020. Let me know down below if you read any of these and what your favorites were from last year. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy reading.